Hello, hello. Time for my fun time review on Arizona. I'm on a road trip right now and I'm finally in Texas, but I just wanted to talk about Arizona because it was honestly way better than I could have expected. I didn't have expectations and I think that's part of what really helped. Um, but yeah, I drove in and some of the first things that I noticed were the absolutely gorgeous rock formations. Like the terrain in Arizona as you're driving through it is so beautiful. The clouds look like they're painted. I've already posted those up, but maybe I'll add those back in here. But yeah, the rock formations are beautiful. The clouds look like they're painted. The summer thunderstorms that come out of those clouds are absolutely gorgeous too if you like summer lightning and thunder action. Oh yeah, speed limits are higher, gas prices are lower, gotta love all of that for sure. And then I got to Arizona and I stayed in this really cool little yurt. The yurt, the area, like it's just so, so beautiful there. Like lots of trees, like way more greenery than I expected. And I was in Flagstaff specifically. And Flagstaff, like, I heard it was pretty cool, but it was really, really fun. Like, I'm a big fan of Flagstaff. Like, you definitely have a college town vibe there. And you also have the observatory. So there's a lot of kind of like intellectual nerdy action, but a lot of like hippie vibes there too, which I'm all about. Like, it's honestly one of the best crystal stores that I ever walked into. If you're into energy and all that stuff and you walk into a, like a metaphysical shop like you can definitely get a sense of it like this one was hands down the best feeling one that I've ever walked into there's this giant amethyst tree like right when you walk in and the way it's laid out just feels really good uh yeah and on that note like another little hippie note there's a juicery there that was really good I had I tried their vegan food like I'm always curious like what local vegan food is like I tried this vegan curry place, which was good, but the juicery was way better. And like your typical bougie health food place, it was on the pricier side, but for what you paid, it was one of the better smoothies that I've had. And I definitely have experience with smoothies. <laughs> so anyways, back to the yurt thing though. So the yurt that I stayed in was really darling. I will say I I'm pretty damn sure there was a bear outside of my room that night though and that freaked me out for sure. I remember just like laying in bed and thinking, okay, that's bigger than a raccoon. It sounded like there was a dinosaur right outside my yurt and I'm racking my brain to make sure that I like closed my food up as best I could and I'm like, maybe I didn't. Thank God this thing doesn't have opposable thumbs because there was definitely a handle to get into the door and yeah, I didn't sleep as well as I would have wanted to, but that's that's the year story slash bear dinosaur outside of the door and i think like the coolest part to feature on this video is lowell observatory like if i were to pick one feature of flagstaff arizona that was like hands down gotta check it out was worth the money another one of those things like the juicery that like you're paying for it but you get a lot of value out of it was the lowell observatory tour mine specifically was like 49 dollars um, I know they have some that start at like 34, but based on timing and what I wanted to get out of it, cause you have to buy a guided tour. Like if you're going to Lowell Observatory, you must buy a guided tour to go with it because they don't allow people to just free range the grounds. I have a, a like conspiracy theory suspicion that because it is an active observatory and they are doing a lot of research projects like they actually post a lot of the research projects that they're working on when you walk in you can read some of the grants that they're getting i think there's probably more to that um and i i'd be very interested to know exactly what they're looking at all the time and what those people are working on like around the clock basically but yeah they don't want you to just like roam the observatory alone uh, but there's cool pictures of telescopes and videos, so I'll post those in here too. And then when you're actually there outside of getting to learn the history of the observatory, which was there at the end of the 1800s, um, Percival Lowell was the guy who did it, and he was a Harvard math grad who was obsessed with space back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and he used to, you know, like try to make telescopes out of whatever he could, and he took telescopes around the entire world and tried to have people access them to be able, like have anyone be able to look through and see space. And he was obsessed with space, and he was obsessed with life on Mars specifically, like so much of the Percival Lowell research was on Mars, um, and just he was very convinced that there was life there and did a lot of research and 
I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that research is kept under wraps too, but that's, again, just a fun, fun speculation. Um, one of the things that they had us do, I brought my funny little glasses, is they give us these like spectrum of light glasses and you just have the typical like Roy G. Biv spectrum running through here, like the rainbows that you see if you look at the light. Um, but what they had us do is they held up different elements like helium, for instance, and then we got to look at the helium through these glasses and got to see how the spectrum totally changes. So that's how they determine a lot of what's in space is they know what the different elements look like when they're run through the light spectrum like this. And then they can determine like, you know, what the nebulas are made out of and what different clusters are of stars and things are made out of. So that was really cool. They also did liquid nitrogen experiments. So they got flowers and like, dip, like explain the liquid nitrogen and how it relates to space, of course, like relating it all together. Um, but one of the things they did was they got like flowers that this flower shop that was just going to throw them away will donate to them and they dunk the flowers in the liquid nitrogen and just smash them and it was it was pretty fun. Um, and then we also like part of the tour you get to walk through and there's a bunch of different telescopes on this observation deck and they're open till like 11, 1130 p.m. and you can do late night tours when it is really dark outside. I was there at like seven o'clock, it was getting dark. So I was able to see some of the dark night stuff and some of the daytime stuff. Like I could see some of the stars, like look at the sun through the telescope. But I think if you go at night, especially on a clear night, you probably get to see some cool stuff through the actual telescope demos that they have. Yeah, that was fun. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Speaking of glasses, I'll put these on, see if I missed anything. Um, no, honestly, I think that pretty much sums up. But yes, I would highly recommend going to the observatory because even I waited until like I stayed there after my tour just to hang out and watch the stars. And you could see even without the telescopes, by like 9, 9.15 p.m. it was so dark and you could see the stream of like the Milky Way with all the different stars there. It was it was pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend Arizona in general, but especially Flagstaff. And I will catch you later.